Do I still love my 2019 Honda Passport EXL all-wheel drive after two years, five months, and 75,000 miles? Yeah! Oh, yeah! <laughs> Not that kind of love. This kind of love. Am I still happy with it after all these overlanding adventures? Back in January of 2021, I was contacted by Honda of America, and we recorded a podcast. This was at the 51,000 mile mark, right after I had a Traxxas three and a half inch lift kit installed on my passport. In this episode, I will be providing some visual aid to go along with the audio. Now, even though the passport does some pretty incredible things, like you see here, going through this really deep rut, this is called a frame twister, uh, open diff, Four wheel drives simply won't be able to get through this without either traction control or some kind of locker. Now, I want to make sure you realize that a Honda Passport is an on road oriented SUV, it is not built for dedicated off roading. So, with that said, let's get on with this podcast. But just know you do not buy a passport to mainly go off-road. I used to drive a four-wheel drive FJ Cruiser and an all-wheel drive Subaru WRX. I wanted a vehicle that would be a mix between the two. I wanted just enough off-road capability and a good amount of on-road performance and comfort and fuel efficiency. So enough with the introduction and disclaimer, let's get on with this podcast. I hope you enjoy. When it comes down to it, Rugged for us is really about understanding the way a customer would want to use it or use a vehicle. This is a group of, you know, a very popular all-wheel drive brand. And everyone is like, what, a Honda did that? I mean, I'm not surprised, but everyone else was. When we brought the Passport, everybody was just shocked at what it could do. Absolutely dumbfounded. All of the instructors were just like, we can't believe what that car can do out here and how well it's performing and all the stuff you guys are doing with it. Like, that is absolutely amazing. Just shocked completely. <laughs> Welcome to Honda Stories. This is the podcast that takes you behind the scenes to hear about some of the most exciting things Honda's been a part of over the last 60 years. So join me, Bradley Hasemeyer, and let's hear about the stories behind the Honda badge. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. In today's episode, we are talking about rugged, as in gritty, in the dirt, all terrain built to rise to the challenge, Honda trucks and SUVs. Now, all right, look, I know that for some of you, when you think of the Honda brand, you probably think of the Civic, right? Or the Accord, which are both fantastic and iconic cars. Or you probably think of Honda, you think reliability, comfort, value, etc. But maybe not necessarily rugged. But today, I think you'll be surprised to hear about how incredibly capable their vehicles, like the Passport, the Pilot, and the Ridgeline, actually are when it comes to going off-road. And of course, that translates into you going off-road and taking your adventures to the next level, which is exactly what I did recently with the 2021 Ridgeline. Now, they've redesigned it, so the looks really match its capabilities. I love this new grille, and now there's a Honda Performance Development Package. It comes with special off-road wheels and tires, so the looks of this thing are really, really good. And Honda said, hey, Bradley, go. Push this thing hard and see what happens. So I said, okay. So I took it to the desert about two hours east of San Diego. I found huge dunes and, and rocky, dried up riverbeds and extremely bumpy washboards. And no matter what I threw at it, this thing just kept going. And those capabilities come from all their testing. So in this episode, we'll hear about what Honda does to actually test their off-roading reliability and durability how people are using the Passport to get to some of the most remote locations in the country. And lastly, we'll hear how actual Honda engineers take on the toughest terrain in the Rebel Rally Desert Endurance Race. And there's someone out there who's really proving this capability over and over in his Passport, 
and that is John DZ. He's an overlanding enthusiast. He has an awesome YouTube channel, and he shares all of his different adventures on there, also on his Instagram page. And you see all the crazy terrain and the adventures he gets into that take him to some of the most remote locations in the country. Hi, my name is John D, and I have a 2019 Honda Passport EXL all-wheel drive, and I love to go overlanding. And from day one, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. I had a vision from owning a previous crossover that I modified for overlanding. I knew exactly what I wanted to do with the Honda Passport. All right, so John, before we get into all the modifications you've done, can you first just start at the top? Define what overlanding is. Overlanding is the activity of exploration. You're not there to conquer obstacles like you would in off-roading. You're overlanding to explore, and you're using your vehicle as an integral part of exploring. You could think of it as car-based backpacking using your vehicle to get away from civilization, to get far enough away that you are disconnected from the world. And some of these trails might be a simple dirt road. Some of the other trails might be going up 6,000 feet to a 10,000 foot elevation through a rock garden, very rough terrain, and many vehicles might not be able to get to. I would say that some of this terrain would be exclusive to body-on-frame trucks. So explain that a little bit, and did that impact your decision on going with the Passport, the idea of body-on-frame? I used to drive a truck. It was body-on-frame, had a rear differential locker, and quite honestly, I didn't know what all that stuff meant. I just drove it to the ski resort through the snow. But one thing I learned was I did not enjoy the on-road handling. Driving the 100 to 300 miles to the ski resort was a chore. And it cost me lots of fuel. And this is back when fuel was around $5 a gallon. And that's why I decided to switch over to a crossover. So how was it that you decided on specifically the Passport? I saw videos on YouTube and they were just doing so well off-road. There's a, a channel called TFL, the Fast Lane Car. Yep. And at the time, they had this obstacle called Goldmine Hill. Only a few vehicles made it up there. Most of them were trucks. The Honda Passport and the Honda Ridgeline were just able to tackle the obstacle so easily. Now, TFL didn't go into detail. They didn't talk about the twin-clutch rear differential. I didn't learn about that until later. They did not talk about the crawl ratio in the Honda Pilot being 20 to one, which is at the time was was class leading and still is upper echelon of all wheel drive vehicles. Now, John, I know you've done a lot of modifications to your passport. Can you walk us through some of those modifications to make it what it is today? So the first thing I did was I lifted it two inches. I installed a Traxta two inch lift kit I did modify my front and rear bumper. I trimmed off the corners. It's important to have front and rear corner overhang clearance. People call that approach and departure angle. And so the Passport stock comes with uh, 21 degrees of approach. And I believe now mine is modified to 40 degrees of approach. And the departure angle is at around 27. And that is also modified to around 40. Very helpful on the trails. Yeah, I could imagine those things would be very helpful. How else have you modified your passport? So one of the more important modifications are my tires. I'm running 32.1 inch all-terrain tires. They're 10 inches wide. So the size for all you technical people would be 255.70 R18. Another very important mod, I, I say the two most important mods would be tires and skid plates. You need underbody protection. So the front skid plate actually covers both transmission and the engine. Because the transmission is transversely mounted, this one skid plate is going to cover your two most vital parts of your car. I've seen people bust their oil pans. There's a guy on, a really popular guy, that busted his oil pan. So tougher tires, 
and skid plates, the two most important things. This is a you know pretty common knowledge in the overlanding community. John, you've obviously been on a lot of great adventures. What is your Honda story? There's obstacle out here in California. It's between LA and Las Vegas. There's a place called Calico, and this obstacle is called Kramer's Arch. It totally crosses up your axles, gets your uh, tires and wheels in, in a funky angle. And I had this hunch my passport might be able to do that obstacle. Okay, so I had some friends with other all wheel drive vehicles that attempted. Four of them attempted before me, and they did not make it. <laughs> not even close. And so the thing is, too, I already knew about my crawl ratio. I already knew that my passport is geared between most all-wheel drive vehicles and a truck in four low. It's right in the middle. I crawl up to the stop school. I put it in stand mode. I press lightly on the throttle, and I inch my way up. I slowly crawl up, no momentum, and the wheels are spinning slowly because tr and traction control is, is able to appropriate power. The twin clutch rear differential is doing its thing. Sand mode tries to mimic a locker. It's not. Ah. But it's definitely between like a limited slip differential and a true locker. Okay. So it's like somewhere in the middle. Yeah. And it was enough to get me through the soft school. Wow. So you get through, you pass these other vehicles, you get to the top, you turn around. What's everybody's reaction to that? Yeah! First of all, this is a group of, you know, a very popular all-wheel drive brand. And everyone is like, what? A Honda did that? <laughs> and I mean, I'm not surprised because I've been watching these Hondas do this on TFL. Yes. For a few years now. And so I wasn't surprised, but everyone else was. I love that. Okay, so now we've clearly established the Passport's performance off-road. What is it like to drive on-road? So one thing I really enjoyed about the Honda Passport uh, being a unibody SUV is that it is so comfortable on-road. And the thing about overlanding here in the USA is you have to drive hundreds and hundreds, sometimes thousands of miles, or even a couple thousand miles, to go on your adventure. And so driving on a highway, on a freeway, at high speeds, out there in Utah, you're, the speed limit's 80 miles an hour. And so having the unibody SUV with independent suspension like in the Honda Passport just makes it so comfortable. It's a big cabin. It's a good place to sit in for a long period of time. And also with the IVTM4 system, it's not only for off-road, it makes a killer on-road vehicle. You mentioned IVTM4, that's the Intelligent Traction Vehicle Management. That's really just another system that's baked into the car that helps you attack some of these trails. That's true, Bradley. It's one of the more capable all-wheel drive systems on the market right now. With the Honda IVTM4 system, not only is it torque vectoring, but it is power-based torque vectoring. Many other all-wheel drive systems will say they have torque vectoring, but it is brake based. The way I see the Honda Passport, Pilot and Ridgeline, because they're all on the same platform, is I see these vehicles as a missing link between all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. That's it for my portion of the Honda Stories podcast called Rise to the Challenge. I share the episode with a chief engineer that was involved in developing the Acura MDX and super handling all-wheel drive. And I also share the episode with the girls from the Honda Rebel Rally Team. If you didn't know, that is an all-girls rally race where the focus is on navigation without electronics. So they're given a map and a compass and that's it. The full episode is 30 minutes long. If you want to listen to it, I'll link it in the video description below. I recommend that you listen to it on a long drive. Sometimes you just want to take a break from the music and listen to something informative. So that's all the time I have for this episode. I'm actually going to be leaving to Colorado in a few hours, and that's why I didn't have time to edit a full episode. So if you're interested in full adventure episodes, then consider subscribing and watching my other videos. 
All right, well, thank you very much for listening and watching, and I hope you have fun on your adventures.